The Xiaomi Mi 9 is not your ordinary smartphone filled with stupid features to make up for loss in premium specs. It is a monster piece of tech to say the least. It is paired with the latest and greatest Snapdragon 855 chipset which can crush anything in its line of sight with plenty legroom to spare. It has 8 gigs of RAM which is not the highest seen in a phone before but is still an overkill in terms of RAM management. It has been fitted with a triple camera setup for incredible photo taking in ultra wide, wide and even lossless zoom view. It can charge at ridiculous speeds wired and wirelessly, and to top it all off, has an HDR10 ready, Full HD+, 6.39 inch AMOLED display, which is both bright and vibrant. Oh, and let's not forget about that $500 price tag. The body of the Mi 9 is like a confused supermodel that is unsure on what the future holds. It is impressively thin at just 7.6 millimeters, but has a camera bump that is arguably half the thickness of the phone itself. It has body paint that is sure to turn some heads based on color change from light reflection and has curves that could kill, but struggles to sit flat on a surface and is a tad on the slippery side. The display is bezel-less besides from the more bearable teardrop notch style since pop-up selfie cams are so early 2018 and hole punch notch styles are too expensive to pair with an AMOLED screen. Above the slim notch, there is an earpiece that can double up as a second stereo speaker, and beside it lays a slim, yes, slim again, LED notification light, which is always welcome. The chin at the bottom of the panel has been reduced and is more symmetrical with the rest of the bezels, but is still noticeable. Where the screen runs off into the sides, there is a power button with a volume bar. A dedicated AI button on the left which is useless unless you can speak Chinese but is said to be Google approved in the global version but even then cannot be customized. There is an IR blaster on top which is pretty pointless for me but for some is a nice little addition. And finally it has a USB 2 Type-C port sandwiched between a single downward firing speaker and exhaust for heat dissipation. Physical looks aside, MIUI 10 now includes a pleasant always-on display that can be customized more than before and even has an epic little sun position animator option which feels pretty futuristic. I like it. Getting into Xiaomi Software Hub can be done super fast thanks to a very snappy facial recognition system and an average in-display fingerprint sensor. I say average because it is an optical one instead of Samsung's new ultrasonic one which is supposed to be game-changing. Xiaomi's optical one isn't terrible, but I still find myself opting for facial recognition when the scanner doesn't recognize my print due to water, dust, or just cold weather. Furthermore, it has a bit of a fault. When the charger is plugged in and you try scan your finger, this weird animated epileptic fit happens with the sensor and always on display, but I'm sure that will be addressed with a future software update. Nevertheless, it is there and it works just as well as let's say the OnePlus 6T though I would have preferred a physical sensor instead if ultrasonic wasn't an option. The extra room could have been used for a bigger battery, if you ask me. Speaking about the battery, it is just 3300 milliampere. Now, five years ago, that would have been impressive, but in an age of 4000 plus milliampere batteries, it seems pretty subpar. However, paired with an efficient seven nanometer chip, you can expect on display times on par with a 4000 milliampere battery paired with an older 10 nanometer chip. You're looking at anything around 5 to 7 screen on time hours. I'll be doing a battery drain test on this soon, so stay tuned for that. But should you be a heavy user and need to fuel up more often than not, you're treated to two ways in doing so. The first being 27 watt wide charging, which can shoot your phone up from 0 to 100 in less than an hour, as I recently tested. Be sure to check that out after this video. The second being wireless charging, but this is where Xiaomi have really outdone themselves. They have broken records with 20 watt fast wireless charging, which I have yet to test since it doesn't come with a wireless charger in the box, but is said to charge your phone up in around an hour and a half thanks to its relatively small battery size. Other than the Mi 9 being equipped with an efficient 7 nanometer chip, it has also become more battery friendly thanks to MIUI 10. Not only does it look better and pack some great features, but also includes dark mode. A first for Xiaomi phones, which improves battery life since AMOLED screens feed off of dark backgrounds. This also applies to most system apps when the feature is enabled. There are many features that you are probably already aware of, but there are some that really stand out for me, though still seem to need some work. For instance, the full screen navigation gestures are great, but having the back action limited to inward swipes from either side of the display still don't make sense to me. Not only is it hard to use with one hand, but often doesn't work at all when in an app such as Gallery, since it is used for something different within the app itself. 
One thing the side swipe is useful for though, is holding in from the side to seamlessly switch between recent apps. This is great, but I think this should be the only feature related to side swipes. Another great feature to have is double tap to wake, which I usually use quite often if available, but whenever the phone is in my pocket, it wakes every few seconds, which leads to battery drain. It just seems a bit too sensitive. Hopefully this will be addressed in a software update. Another piece of software innovation is Xiaomi's new fingerprint shortcut menu. Holding down the sensor after the phone is unlocked opens a quick menu for shortcuts, but it takes its time to open and would honestly just be quicker to open the app normally. Not only is it a bit slow, but cannot be customized, though I stand to be corrected. For the life of me, I just cannot find an option. Using the software skin itself is smooth and clean. It has small touches that make you truly appreciate Xiaomi's efforts, such as a fancy looking volume control bar and system icon animations which occur when closing the respective app. If this is not your cup of tea and you are more of a speed of light kind of person, then you'll be pleased to hear that there is an option to completely remove animations rooted directly into the accessibility settings menu. Xiaomi's skin isn't all that bad, but one main complaint I have in the home screen is the lack to adjust the grid layout. You are stuck to just 4 icons across and 6 down. Vertical icon space isn't the problem here, but a standard for me is at least 5 across since it is not necessarily a small device and things just look more symmetrical with more horizontal icons. What's the fix for this you may ask? Well, unlike Huawei, Xiaomi actually allow the use of third party launchers such as Nova Launcher which allows for more customization, screen space and cleanliness. The 7 nanometer Snapdragon 855 chipset is top of its class in terms of performance. Everything you do on the device with animations set on or off is snappy. It is honestly the fastest device I have ever used, period. The only other Snapdragon 855 equipped phone at the moment other than the S10 is the Lenovo Z5 Pro GT and that achieved an Antutu score of just over 350,000 as opposed to the Mi 9 score of 370,000. It seems the extra MIUI 10 effort Xiaomi have put in has contributed to optimization which is good for both performance and efficiency in terms of battery life. Make sure you check my Antutu Bench Run video for the Mi 9 after this. Games can't even begin to sweat what is the Snapdragon 855, and never mind social media apps, this thing can even emulate old Nintendo games without lag. Xiaomi seem to have also improved RAM management as well, instead of just killing previously opened apps. With all this power, you do need something to look at, and thankfully Xiaomi have stuck with an AMOLED display. This is actually the exact same panel as seen on the Mix 3 before it, besides from the notch. It is a bright and vibrant display as I mentioned before. It looks great indoors and is still visible outdoors when set to max brightness. But keep in mind this panel has a peak brightness of 620 nits. That is just half of the new Galaxy S10's 1215 nits. Like they say, you get what you pay for. But is it really worth extra cash for extra brightness? 620 nits is already more than double than an average desktop display and it's perfectly fine outdoors. It may not look as fancy, but your eyes will certainly thank you for it. Otherwise, the screen is awesome to look at and the notch is very discreet after a while due to its curves. Other than display visibility, the screen is fitted with Gorilla Glass 6 protection which is said to be even more scratch proof and if you would like Gorilla Glass 5 protection as well, no worry, just flip your phone over and appreciate Xiaomi for including some extra protection on the back glass too. So that means no cover right? Not quite. The camera bump is the biggest I've seen to date. Seriously, it's almost half the phone's thickness. But let's just be happy that Xiaomi have attached sapphire glass protection which is said to be almost fully scratch proof. That being said, sure you could use the Mi 9 without a fitted case, but then you have to deal with a leaning effect when placed on a flat surface. Slap the included case on and things become more stable, but even then the bump still sticks out, but not by much. This could certainly be a problem for some, but let's look at what is more important here. What is actually under that sapphire glass protection are three cameras, a first for Xiaomi. The first and most important one is the primary sensor as it packs in a 48 megapixel Sony IMX586 sensor which is the same as the Honor View 20 I recently reviewed and took as good a photo as the Mate 20 Pro and Pixel 3 XL. This lens has the widest aperture of the three at f1.8. Regular photos come out crisp and clear in daylight settings but strangely enough it seems the View 20 took slightly better pictures even though they have the same camera. This could be because of the different AIs used. 
Default mode is set to 12 megapixels as it binds all 48 megapixels for a more dense shot, but when in good lighting, don't be shy to enable the 48 megapixel mode for greater detail. When taking snaps at night, things are alright, but switch over to night mode and things get interesting. Not only does it brighten things up, but it also handles light a lot better, making for higher details around light sources. Not only is it good for taking snaps at night, but it can also improve light noise when taking pictures in low light conditions, especially indoors. The two secondary cameras pack in 12 and 16 megapixels, the former being a telephoto lens for 2x optical zoom and depth effect assistance, and the latter being an ultra wide lens for immersive wide shots and even doubles up as a macro sensor since it allows you to get closer to your subject. Both have an aperture of f2.2, and all three cameras are equipped with laser autofocus which is what LG brought to the table a few years back. It is not quite optical image stabilization, but does the job when needed. A camera feature worth mentioning is what Xiaomi calls straighten, and once enabled keeps your scene straight no matter how you hold the phone. This is a brilliant idea and actually retains the image quality too. On the video front, the Mi 9 once again checks all the right boxes. We have 4K video running at 60fps, which looks brilliant, and 1080p at 60fps, which looks just as good. They are a bit shaky without any form of true stabilization, but the video quality far outweigh the lack of stable frames. A worthy video feature is subject tracking, which can be used at 4K or 1080p. It simply uses AI software to focus on a subject and follow it around much like a gimbal, but bear in mind it does zoom into the subject, so expect a slight loss in quality. There is also an option for slow motion at 240 or 960 frames per second, and both can be used at 1080p, something the competition lacks. 960fps slow-mo works great, and really is damn slow, but 240fps is a lot easier to use and better for more situations in my opinion. Switching over to the selfie cam which is embedded in the teardrop notch, you are treated to a 20 megapixel snapper with an aperture of f2.0. Pictures come out clear and packed with detail, and the lens does a surprisingly good job of handling light such as sun rays. Even though there is only a single front camera, it does a pretty good job when it comes to depth effect, which is only software based, though AI helps out in that department quite well. Recording video with the front cam is limited to 1080p at 30fps, and though it does a decent job, I suggest smartphone vloggers opt for the Galaxy S10 due to its 4K front cam acrobatics. Above the selfie cam sits the earpiece, which is slim and measures in at around an inch since it doubles up as a secondary speaker. There is no Dolby Atmos here, but the downward facing speaker is loud and clear, and the earpiece adds some immersive experiences when in landscape, but don't be fooled by its size, it isn't very loud at all. The Mi 9 is a great step in the right direction for Xiaomi. It checks all the right boxes besides for a few. It does not have an IP certification, so it is not waterproof, but it is sealed up tight, so should be a bit splash resistant. It does not have a headphone jack, but comes with an adapter. It does not have micro SD card support, and it still has a notch, though a pretty small one at that. That being said, it has an immersive full screen display with minimal bezels, a monster of a CPU chip that can handle anything you throw at it, along with an average battery size but is well optimized thanks to that 7 nanometer chip. It can be charged up in no time with extremely fast wired and wireless charging. It's extremely appealing and thin besides for that huge camera bump, but that is well protected and the triple cameras within the sapphire glass take some pleasing shots. There are a few hiccups I think Xiaomi could have prevented if they pushed their launch back a bit, but for this price tag there are very few phones I could recommend above the Mi 9. You certainly get more than your money's worth.